Hello, hope you're all getting on with the Summer Reading Challenge and are well on your way to becoming wild world heroes. But we at Dustin Library have got another craft event for you. Today, I'm going to show you how to make some animal masks. Yep, we're going to do a squirrel and we're going to do a blue tit, one of our popular visitors to our garden. And all we really need is a paper plate like this one, as well as some felt tips, some sellotape and a pair of scissors. If you are a bit young for a pair of scissors, then get your grown up to help you with this one. But otherwise, I think you should be able to do this by yourselves and make wonderful animal masks. So let's start. I'm going to take uh, my paper plate here and we're going to make a squirrel first. I've drawn some pencil lines on here to guide me, but I'm going to draw them in in black pen. Uh, just so it's really clear what we're doing because we want our squirrel to look absolutely fantastic so that we can wear it out in the garden and the local squirrels will think that they've got another one of their own. You can pretend to be a squirrel and we're going to be doing a red squirrel today so it's going to have lovely orange fur but most of the squirrels that you will see around are grey squirrels. But you will still see some red squirrels here and there and if you go to a place like the Isle of Wight which has never had grey squirrels then you will see red squirrels. Okay so I've drawn some lines there and made a lovely squirrel face so now we need to get our scissors. So I'm going to cut this out here okay and I'm just going to cut along the bottom of the shape here. Okay, that's the only cutting I'm going to do at this point. Okay, so we can make our squirrel shape with its lovely fat cheeks because it's been eating some nuts, putting them away for winter. And once we've done the cutting out, then we can start with the colouring in. But be careful when you're cutting it out because the bit that we're cutting off the bottom, we're going to use not only for the squirrel, so we're going to use it to make some squirrel ears, we're also going to use it for our blue tip later. So you just need to cut this off and put it to one side. Those of you who've watched my videos before will know that I like to talk and make little music noises as I'm going along. So there we go. So I've cut that out just there and then we need to reach for our felt tip pens so first of all i'm going to do the squirrel's nose we're going to do a nice black nose for the squirrel so i'm going to color that in there and so he's got a nice black shiny healthy nose okay and then i'm going to get the orange for its orange fur so as as i said the uh the squirrels that we usually see are grey squirrels and the grey squirrels came over here uh, from Europe some time ago and uh, they're just they're just a bit more keen on getting food than the red squirrels so they push the red squirrels out of the way and now you only get red squirrels in some some far-flung places um, which is kind of sad but you know that's the way of the world um, and at least we've got squirrels to look at because there's nothing better I find and looking out your window and seeing a squirrel in your garden or in the park and it's looking for nuts and sometimes you can even take some nuts and feed your squirrel. They do like to do that although when you do that the pigeons tend to get involved and the pigeons come along and uh, they want all that squirrel food to themselves because that's what pigeons do really. So, we're colouring in this lovely orange colour and isn't it weird that two of our favourite British animals, the squirrel and the fox, have both got that kind of orangey red fur. Very weird isn't it? Still it helps them stay camouflaged and stay out of the way of predators which is what we want. Right, so just colouring this in and obviously if I was doing this uh, for myself to keep I would take a lot more time on this colouring in but the last thing you want to do is spend a big chunk of your day watching me 
colouring in. I mean, it's bad enough that you've got to spend a couple of minutes doing it. Um, but to spend all day watching me carefully colouring in a squirrel mask might be a bit too much to ask of you. So instead, I'm just kind of rushing through, just making sure that it looks pretty orange. And as you can see, there is our squirrel there. So the next thing we need to do is make some ears. So we're going to go back to this piece of plate that we cut off earlier and we're going to cut two edges off it. One off there, one off there. Okay, And these are quite nice shapes already to be squirrel ears. But what do we need to do? Well, we need to colour them in, don't we? So again, I'm going to reach for my, uh, my orange pen and I'm going to colour in my squirrel ears. Yeah. And you can use paints as well, you don't have to use felt tips, paints might even be easier on these plates because they're not a regular shape, um, but I'm using felt tips because I like felt tips, I don't get to use felt tips very often. When you're a grown up, using felt tips is, is a rare occasion, so any time that you do get to use felt tips and colour things in, uh, it is a fun time, so you've got to find your fun where you can. So there we go, so I've coloured those in there. And then I'm going to reach for my sellotape. And I'm going to stick two bits of sellotape on the back of each ear. And we will put it under here, like this. And squirrel's ears are kind of at the top of their head. Okay, so you want it at the top of the head rather than on the side. If you put it on the side, it might look a bit too much like a cat. I mean, it's going to look like a cat anyway because everything I make has an alarming habit of turning into a cat. I think it's because my cat at home is always um, on my mind because she's always asking for food. Uh, so there we go. We've got some ears there. We might just need bit of tape on the front as well just to stop them flopping back because the last thing we want is floppy squirrel ears so we can see that there and then the final thing to do for our squirrel is we need to cut out the eyes so this is where you will need a grown-up to help you um, so I've drawn nice big circles and I'm going to cut around there so we can make nice big eye holes so we can see where we're going not as easy as it should be with these tiny scissors but these are the safest scissors so these are the ones that I like to use because the last thing I want to do is cut myself because that would be horrible it would hurt and it wouldn't be very nice for you to see so I'm gonna just make a little hole and then cut round in a circle And you can do this with any kind of animal, really. I mean, I'm doing a squirrel and a blue tit today, but you can make your own animal masks. And it's just a case of, of having a look at an animal, drawing its face on a paper plate, and then turning it into a mask. So as you can see there, I've cut out my holes. I can look through it there. And if I want, I can either get a stick so I can hold it up like that, or I can get my grown-up to put some holes in either side and get some string and tie that around my head. So here I am, pretending to be a squirrel. So let's move on and do another one, shall we? Shall we do a blue tit? Now this one's going to be a little bit different because uh, we're kind of doing the whole blue tit's body uh, as our mask, not just its face. But again, I've drawn some pencil lines, so I'm going to go through and just draw over those pencil lines in a thicker pen. So I know where I'm colouring. And uh, the reason I've cho chosen the blue tip out of all of the other birds that visit our garden is because the blue tip is a very distinct bird. And it has what I like to call a robber's mask or a superhero mask across its face. And it wears a little blue hat. So it's quite easy to spot. And as the robin has a red chest, the blue tip, has a yellow chest so 
It's quite a distinct little bird and you will notice them come into your garden if you have one uh, and try and eat any food that you might put out. So there we go, I've drawn in our blue tip there. So the first thing you want to do is draw his blue hat. So I've got a nice blue pen here. I'm just going to colour in the top of the blue tip to make his nice blue hat. And lots of birds use different colours to mark themselves out. There are different reasons they use that. Some, re some birds do it so they can hide in the trees. Other birds do it so that they, they're not hiding, so that other birds of their type can find them. And so they can make a nice little group of birds, as in the phrase, birds of a feather flock together. So you'll see these little birds, they will be able to say, oh, there's another robin, or oh, there's another sparrow, or oh, there's another chaffinch. And they will be able to find each other because they know that everyone in the blue tip family is wearing a blue hat. So now we're going to do the black robber's mask across the middle of its face. Okay. Again, is it a robber? Is it a superhero? Who knows? I mean, it depends how the blue tit is feeling in the morning, I guess. Uh, yes, uh, I mean, how do you feel when you get up in the morning? Do you feel like you're going to be a criminal or a superhero? A supervillain or a baddie? Do you feel like Spider-Man or do you feel like the Green Goblin? It all depends, doesn't it? Right. Do that there. Da -da -da. Nice little black mask. Colouring that in as we go. Fantastic. And then we want to do a beak. I'm going to do orange for his beak. They generally have a, a darker beak, but I think with all that dark uh, masking around his eyes, I think a nice orange beak will kind of lift up there. And then I'm going to do his yellow chest. So I get my yellow pen and we're just going to colour in everything below this line at the bottom so that our blue tip has got a lovely yellow chest to show off. I wonder how the blue tip got its yellow chest. There's lots of stories about how the robin got his red breast, but I don't think there's any stories about how the blue tip got so yellow. Maybe if you can think of one, come into the library and tell me how you think the blue tip got such a yellow chest. And there we go, we can see the blue tip has got a yellow chest there. But there's a couple steps more to do. As I said, we're not just making a blue tip's face because we've got a bit of its chest here. We're going to make the whole blue tip. So what does a bird have? A bird has wings. So we're going to go back again to this piece that we cut off. I'm going to cut it in half and then I'm going to cut a nice kind of rounded wing shape out of it here. And birds wings are usually of a bit longer than this but this is this is a kind of a fun little bird so we're, we're doing it uh, our own way really so we're cutting around to make kind of an overly wing shape cut around there and then the blue tips wings are generally blue as you'd imagine with it being called a blue tip but it's got a white line across the middle. So I'm going to get my black pen and I'm just going to draw two lines there. And our white line will be in the middle of those. And then we get our blue pen and we're just going to colour in uh, the top and bottom of these pieces of cardboard. Nice and blue. Blue is the sky. That's one. And we're going to do another one. And again, you can use this basic shape for doing a bird and do your own bird. 
like I said, you could do your own squirrel, or you could do as a fox or a cat or, or anything like that. Then uh, you can use this template to do your own bird. And then again, we reach for our old friend, the sellotape. Uh, put a pit, couple of bits of sellotape on there. Stick that one on that side. Okay, press that down. That one on that side. Press that down. And then the last thing we need to do again is cut ourselves some eye holes. So you might need to get your grown up for this bit. Okay. Make my little hole and then I'm going to cut round in a circle and make a nice circular eye hole. Make sure that we get a bird's eye view. Just made up that joke. It's a real dad's joke, but as I am a dad, I think it's only fair that I get to tell dad jokes. So I'll do that there, and there we can see we're pretending to be a blue tip. Now again, you can get a stick, stick it on the bottom so you can hold it up like that, or you can get grown up to put two holes in the side, tie some string, and then you can make a string mask. So today. We've made a squirrel mask and we've made a blue tip mask and we can pretend to be animals. And all of this is done with just stuff we found around the house because that's how you become a wild world hero.